Hey everyone, it's Nicole Steele, the Joyful Stamper. How you guys doing? Um, yeah, so I'm having some technical problems on my laptop. I cannot pull up my page for some reason. Um, I can't pull up anybody's page. I'm not sure why. So I'm not going to be able to see comments if anybody's going to join me tonight. But, oh well, it is what it is. So, I'm just going to go ahead and get right to the stamping. And if you leave a comment, I'm going to have to look through it later because I just can't. I can't see anything. So, but I don't know. Um, I have two things tonight. I thought we would play with this Rise and Shine Celebration Stamp Set. It's photopolymer and you can use it to stamp on on either side of the images and I have us making a cute little tea holder double thing and then I have a K cup holder a single K cup holder but I actually um I didn't make a sample ahead of time so I just have the template so <laughs> we're gonna wing it <laughs> and I'm gonna create it on the fly so if you're watching this live welcome if you're watching the replay welcome also it's Nicole Steele I'm the owner of the Joyful Stamper and I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. So, whoops. Crazy week, huh? Crazy week. Okay, so if you get dizzy, close your eyes. I'm going to flip the camera down. All right, here goes. And I will tell you when to go ahead and open your eyes again. I'm just going to get this straight and focused. Okay. All right, we are good, good to go. That's the other problem I'm gonna have too is I can't see if I'm actually in the camera. So I'm gonna make a quick pencil mark down here so I know where I am. Okay, all right, let me try getting onto my page here one last time. Okay, oh, Marianne Rezio, I can see you. And you have me on live. I might just have to go <laughs> with yours. I don't know. I cannot get on mine at all. Very strange. Very, very strange. So, okay. Well, let's get started. We're going to go ahead and do this anyways. Hi, Holly. This is what the first project I have. I was explaining that I can't bring this up on my laptop, so um, I might miss comments. But this is a double pocket a tea bag holder. So if you know anyone that likes to drink tea or um, you could put, um, I don't know, you could put gift cards in here too. But I thought this set lent itself nicely to making this. So this is going to be the first thing we're going to make. And it's super easy. Super easy. So let us get started. Sorry, I feel a little bit discombobulated because of the fact that I can't see my laptop. Okay, so what's really nice about this project is it starts with a six by six inch piece of paper and this is actually a really popular paper pad size now um, for card makers just because it's a commonly used size. So I'm gonna put this on my scoreboard and since it's six, inch, six inches by six inches, it does not matter which side you end up putting this on, but we have this lined up and we're going to fold this first and do a triangle just like this. Okay. All right, I got to get my mind focused. Okay, so if you see, I folded that, I made a triangle just like that. And then what I'm going to do is put that fold on the leftmost part of this scoreboard. And I am going to score it half an inch. So I have it lined up there. I'm going to put the bone folder in there and I'm going to bring it down to score it half an inch and then I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to score it at half an inch on the other side also and the reason I'm doing it on both sides is because I need to get a really really good crease on this okay now we're going to move it so that the fold is at the top of the scoreboard there no. and oh Lily that's my little pup I don't know what she's barking at and we're going to score at five and five eighths. So one, two, three, four, five. We're going to score at five and five eighths right there. OK, 
Okay, and then we're also going to score at two and three quarters right here. Okay, so now we have all of our score lines. And we're going to open it up and we're going to fold everything on those score lines just like this. Okay. okay, all right, we've done that, and now what we're going to do is we're going to take some adhesive, and I'm just going to use some snail adhesive, and we're going to fold these flaps in this way, and I'm going to run a line of adhesive right down the middle, and Stick it together just like that. Then what I'm going to do is fold this in half so that these two points meet. And I'm going to use the bone folder to really give it a good crease. Oh, hi Amy. I keep looking up at my phone to see what's going on because I was saying that I can't see on my laptop. It's not working. Facebook isn't working on my laptop so I can't see comments or anything. So I folded this in half and I'll put the project we're making in the camera there. So I folded this in half and now what I'm going to do is fold back on the score line right there and fold this back on the score line right there and you'll see there's like an accordion fold in the middle there and we're going to bring these two together and punch a hole at the top. So I'm bringing out my hole punch again. Oh, Amy, I am making this tea bag holder. It's a double pouch tea bag holder and then I'm also making... Um, a single, those K cups, um, I'm going to make a K cup holder because I'm using this stamp set, so I thought it kind of went well with it. So it's going to be like a little box you can plop a K cup holder in, but they're really cute if you're having like little parties or showers and stuff like that. So I'm going to punch a hole right at the top because we're going to tie something through that. Okay, now I'm going to do some stamping. Some stamping. All right. And I'm going to take this mug, and these this stamp set's actually what we call reversible. So if you can see, there's a pattern on this side, but I can also stamp on the back side too. So you can either stamp this or it'll stamp this one. I'm going to go for this look right here, and I'm going to use Melon Mambo ink, and I'm going to stamp it on a piece of white cardstock. Okay, we get it. I'm going to ink this up. I have no idea what my dog is barking at. It's just the five of us here at home. Hmm. She's a little dog though. She's got little dog syndrome. She thinks she's so big and tough. But then the minute a, bit, a bigger dog comes around, she runs and hides. Oh, thank you, Amy. All right, so we got that. And now while I have everything out, I'm going to take a Daffodil Delight ink pad. Don't you like the, the names of these colors? They're so cute. So cute. And I have this little itty bitty flower here and I am going to stamp it on a piece of pineapple punch card stock. Look how bright that yellow is. I love it. Yes. And I'll stamp it right in the corner just like that. Then the next thing I'm going to stamp also on this pineapple punch paper is a little tag. This tag is so cute. So cute. Let me make sure I'm doing this. I'm going to stamp this the right way because it matters what direction it goes. I'm going to have to get another piece of paper that isn't going to fit on there. Okay, so we got the flower. Now we're gonna stamp the tag, and I'm thinking it needs to go this way. Okay, yep. And I'm gonna stamp that right there, just like that. And what I wanted to do on my originals, I want that heart, but I want it to be a different color. However, you can see that it's the heart doesn't actually stamp, it's just an outline. So what I'm going to do is use Melon Mambo to stamp this tag again on a piece of Melon Mambo cardstock 
And then I'm gonna end up cutting that heart out so I can follow the shape of that stamped image, even though I didn't actually stamp the heart itself, if that makes sense to anybody. Okay, so I'll show you here. I'm gonna cut this out. And then what I'm gonna do is actually snip around this heart because that's what I really want. Now, if you have a little mini heart punch, you could certainly use that, but you know what? I'm all about using what you have on hand and not needing a million different tools to do something. So since I already have the stamp in the stamp set, I'm gonna use it. And I'm gonna make do, because after all, us stampers, we are creative people, right? We don't need to have everything to make a great project. And then I'm gonna stamp this, or cut this little flower out. So, I'm just gonna use my paper snips to cut around this. Now there are dies that you can use. Um, it's called Cup of Cheer dies, and they will cut out some of the images in this stamp set, but I don't have it. And my $10 paper snips do a good job. So that's why I'm gonna use them. So, here we go. And now we're gonna cut this mug. I love this melon mambo. I used to not be a bright person. And even if you if you come into my house, you will see that it's a lot of darker colors. I like darker colors because I like the feeling of being cozy and that in terms of interior decorating is what gives me that cozy feeling. But when I stamp, anything is, I'll go for anything. Now in my original sample, I cut out the handle and I'll show you a little trick for doing that. These are super sharp scissors. So if you take your scissors and just poke it through right, right like that and just snip, make a snip out that way, make a snip out this way and another one out this way, it makes it much easier to then go ahead and cut around that handle just like this following around it. Now the framelits of course would cut that handle out for you and that needs cleaned up a little bit there. But do I dare mess with it or do I leave it be? I think I'm going to leave it be because I'm afraid if I try to do anything more to it, I will end up messing it up. So, okay, so there we go with that. And now we have this. And we're gonna put everything together. Let me get, I went ahead and stamped the greeting ahead of time. And it's also from the set Rise and Shine. I just, I took the Rise and Shine sentiment, I stamped it on a circle of blueberry bushel cardstock, and then I sprinkled some white embossing powder on it and melted it with a heat tool. So I did that ahead of time. And I'm gonna punch a hole in this tag too. So we'll get that ready to go. Okay, now we can assemble all of this. So, first things first, I am going to glue my um, my mug on here. And I'm going to use a little piece of tear and tape only because I think this is probably going to get knocked around a little bit. And so I really want that mug to stay on. So I need some really strong adhesive. So, I don't know, is anybody going stir crazy yet? I saw tonight that in Pennsylvania, Governor Wolf shut down everything, all non-essential businesses. So, I don't know, I don't know. I kinda wish the businesses could stay open. I'm not sure how I feel about all of this, but it doesn't really matter, does it? I can get lots of reading done. Emma gave me a good book to read. I forget the name of it though, <laughs> but I already started it. I always get so excited when I read a book and then I watch Jeopardy and a clue comes up and it's something I just read a couple days before. It gets me so excited. I have a little book I keep where I mark down all the answers I get right on Jeopardy every night so I can see if I'm improving or not, but I don't know. Everybody's got little quirky habits, right? That would be mine. I'm a Jeopardy nerd. Through and through. 
Now I'm taking a piece of pineapple punch ribbon, grow green ribbon, and I'm putting it through the punch tool at the top here. These colors I'm using, um, they're called Stampin' Up's Ink Colors. So every year Stampin' Up introduces five new colors and they're trendier colors and they're only meant to stick around for two years. So these ones are set to go bye-bye in June. So this will be the last, last couple months for them, the last hurrah. So I'm basically trying to use up everything I have that's in the 2018-2020 in color lineup. And this is Melon Mambo, but this is that's not part of it. But Blueberry Bushel is, Pineapple Punches, Lovely Lipstick is, Call Me Clover, and did I say, oh, Grapefruit Grove. Okay, I'm going to put this heart on here. I can't wait to see what the five new colors are going to be. I know one of them is called Bumblebee because I ordered some paper that I just got and there was a sneak peek of it. And it's this beautiful honey colored yellow. So where this pineapple punch is super bright and vibrant, um, the pineapple punch, I mean the bumblebee is, is really mellow. Okay, and now I'm taking solid Whisper White Baker's Twine and I'm gonna string it through there. And let's see if I can do this. I'm gonna get it through the punched hole right there. Yes, ta-da! Sometimes my fingers don't wanna co cooperate. And I'm just gonna tie this in a knot up here. I'm not even gonna try to tie a bow. I was successful with the pineapple punch ribbon, so I'm not pushing my luck. Okay. So we've got that, and now all I have to do is add some tea bags. We are huge tea drinkers in this family, so. And there's one side, and I'll put one in the other side. See how that fits in there so nicely? So there you go. If you wanted to, you could decorate the other side too, but there you go. A double pocket tea bag holder. Just like that. It only uses a six inch by six inch piece of designer series paper. So a lot of paper pads come six by six inches, but if you have 12 inch by 12 inch paper, just cut it into quarters and you can get four of these out of a 12 inch by 12 inch sheet. So really easy, really cute. Yeah, and no waste. I love when there's no paper waste. So that's project number one with the Rise and Shine set. And now we are going to go on to project number two. Now project number two is the one that I'm winging it because I did not create a sample. However, I did create a template. So create with me on the fly, won't you? So I always like to take some an old piece of cardstock and make a template of the 3D project I'm going to make ahead of time. And I score it, I mark in all my measurements so that I can follow it. And if you should ever see a template like this on my blog, you'll see sometimes I write DSP here. That's designer series paper. That could be your pattern. That's your pattern paper. I write it in the direction in which it's supposed to face because some pattern papers have a definite up, down direction and so you want to make sure that you don't glue it on upside down. Um, so this will always tell you which direction to glue the designer series paper onto your 3D project. Now for the paper I'm using today, it do, it's a gingham pattern so it isn't going to matter. But this is lovely lipstick. This is another one of the colors that's going to be retiring in June. And we're going to make some score marks on it. So here we go. I'm venturing into the unknown now with this. Okay, so we have it five inches by nine inches. And on the nine inch side, we are scoring at three inches and five inches and six and a half inches and eight and a half inches. Okay, so again, that's on the nine inch side. We're scoring at three, five, six and a half and eight and a half inches okay then I'm gonna turn it so now the five inch side is at the top of my scoreboard and I am going to score at one and a half inches and at three and a half inches 
So again, the five inch side of this piece of lovely lipstick cardstock is at the top of my scoreboard and I'm scoring at one and a half inches and at three and a half inches. Now I am going to turn this back again so that the nine inch side is at the top of my scoreboard. I am going to score at the one and a half inch mark, but I'm only going to go down to this first score line here. Okay. Then I'm going to flip the paper over and I'm going to score again at one and a half inches, but only down to this score line right here. So this middle part here will not have a vertical one and a half inch score line. Okay. So you can see that. All right. We're done with the scoring. Now we're going to do some trimming. Okay. And I'm going to get a bigger pair of scissors for this. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut away these two pieces right here, which are the skinny half inch tabs. Okay. And I'm cutting, I'm trimming along the score lines. So I'm not freehanding it. And now what I'm going to do is all these little score lines here, I'm going to trim it. And I'm only cutting up to this score line. These are going to be the flaps of the box when I fold it and assemble it. Now I'm turning it and I'm going to cut on the other side too. Okay. So I went out today and I took a four mile walk and it felt so good. So, so good. I hadn't exercised in over a week because the Y is closed and I don't run anymore because I can't. And I was feeling really sluggish. It's like a catch-22. You know moving is going to make you feel better, but you haven't moved in a while, so you just your energy gets sapped. But the four-mile walk, and it was in a light drizzle, it did me so, so good. Now what I'm going to do, oh, one other thing I forgot to do. So these flaps here, when you fold them into a box, they have a tendency to stick up, these straight edges. So what's really helpful to do is to take it, take a flap like this, and cut sort of at an angle to trim it. Give it a little haircut so that when you fold these flaps in, they don't end up sticking up. And they're going to be hidden, so it's impossible to trim it too much of an angle. So you just use your scissors to do that. And that one and let me see here actually this piece gets trimmed away too we're gonna cut those away okay and now we're gonna trim this down I heard the YMCA though is gonna start having online classes on Monday morning the 23rd and I am so excited about that it said all your favorite instructors so, I'm wondering what kind of classes they'll stream online, but I'll be there. I miss the pump it classes and the strength training. Okay, so now we've got that taken care of. So this is what our piece looks like. Now I'm going to take a circle die, and I'm going to die cut a circle right through there because that's where our K-cup is going to go. So let me go get my die cut machine. And you can see how this is done. So this is a cuddle bug. I hope this isn't too close to the camera. This is a cuddle bug. They no longer make these, but this is not the only die cutting machine on the market. There are plenty of other ones. So, um, and Stampin' Up! is actually coming out with one in, I believe, the new catalog in June. So you'll have plates. Every die cutting machine is different in terms of its plates, but generally speaking, you have your base plate, which is the one that goes on the bottom. And then I have this plate, which is what I'm going to cut on. So I'll put my cardstock on there and I'm going to put my framelit right where I want it to cut. If you can see with these framelits, they have a little lip on them. That's the cutting surface. So I'm going to put it on my cardstock and then there's another plate that you put on top of it. I'm going to stand up to do this and you turn the handle and it runs right through just like that and you can pop out the circle 
and you can see you have that's where the K cup's gonna go. Okay, now I'll move this to the side. Okay, now that circle was part of a larger set of circles called the layering circles die. So you could see some of them are scalloped. Well, they're meant to be layered. So you could cut a scallop circle out and then you could cut a regular circle and it would layer on top of this just like that. So you get a bunch of them in one particular set and they all operate the same way on the die cut machine that I just showed you. Okay, so there we have that. Now we're gonna glue some paper on here. Now this is the 2018-2020 uh, in color paper stacks. These are sheets of six by six inch paper. They come in all five of those in colors. And I think you get 48 sheets total. Here's the package. I only have scraps left, but they're different patterns, different, um, the in colors, you can see that. And these are cut at one and three eighths of an inch by one and seven eighths of an inch. And you need three of them. And we're gonna glue them to our holder now and I'm gonna follow my template so that I know where to put them okay now this is where the the up or down of the pattern will matter it won't for this pattern since it's gingham so if you can follow along with my template here in this case you could see that the pattern would go down like that and we're gonna put this pattern here and it'll go on this side right here and this one will go on this side right here. Okay. You know what I did? I can see it on this one. I accidentally, I trimmed those flaps and I shouldn't have on this particular one, but that's okay. We're gonna make it work. That one will know. Okay, so we have that done and now I'm gonna fold on all these score lines here because we're gonna start assembling our box. Hi, Brian. You wanna learn how to make a K-cup holder? Here's the funny thing, we don't even have a Keurig. My mom gave one to Emma for her college dorm. And uh, that's how we have all these K-cups, but I thought it'd be cute to make it. Okay, so now I'm going to put some adhesive on this little skinny part right there. Just like this. And I'm using tear and tape because again, I need it to be a nice strong hold. Peel off the liner. Now here's what we're gonna we're do. We're going to do, we're gonna fold that flap in like that and we are just gonna fold our box like this and press that down, okay? Then the box will sit up nicely just like that. And now we are going to assemble our sides. So I'm gonna put some adhesive on that flap and glue that together. And then I'm gonna put some adhesive right there, push that down and more adhesive there and glue that down and just use your fingers to pinch it together to give it nice adhesion there and we're going to do the exact same thing on the other side put some adhesive on that flap okay and just pinch it together okay there's the little K-cup box, but we're not done. We gotta decorate it. We gotta decorate it. I have a piece of Whisper White cardstock that I'm gonna use. It's gonna get glued right up there, but we gotta stamp on it first. So, we're gonna stamp, make today amazing. I think that's a really, really good saying. Now, I'm also going to stamp this little, what is it, steam, a little bit of steam there. And I am going to use a, hmm, what color should we do this? Let's do this, we'll make the steam blueberry bushel. I don't have a blueberry bushel ink pad, 
So what you can do instead is color on your stamps with a Stampin' Write marker. And you can stamp that way. Photopolymer stamps can be a little bit tricky with coloring on them because sometimes the ink will beat up, but most of the time it works pretty well. They're really good on red rubber stamps. Okay, then what you do once you've got that is just give a little half breathe on it. That gets the ink re-wet again, and I'm going to go ahead and just stamp this like right there. Okay. And then I think I'll stamp makes um, today amazing. I'm going to stamp it in black ink just so it shows up over top of that blue berry bushel steam right there. Make today amazing. Oh, you can't even see that. Let's stamp on the back. I told you we were winging it. Okay, make today amazing. Okay, now I think what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to put the little steam marks along the bottom. So let's try this again. That way we won't cover up the sentiment. Okay. And I always use the brush tip of the Stampin' Write marker when I'm coloring on my stamps. I'm going to, I have a hot chocolate cake cup to put in this because we don't drink coffee. But I do drink a lot of hot chocolate. And as far as I'm concerned, it's still hot chocolate season. <sighs> okay, so I'm going to stamp it right there. Just like that. And let's do some more. Oh, you know what? There's another little swirl. Let's stamp it there, too. Okay. And we're going to put that right on there just like that. Okay, get that straight. And now I want to stamp a mug. I want to put a mug on there. So we're going to use this stamp again, only I want to use the pattern side. So I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to get out some Whisper White cardstock. And I'm going to use my blueberry bushel marker to color on this. That is vibrant. Look at that. Ooh. This is going to be bright. Oh yeah. Really, really, really bright. Okay. <sighs> Breathe on it. Stamp it. There we go. Gorgeous. And now we're going to cut this out. Okay. It is so silent in my house and everybody is here. My daughter's even here in the room with me working on a school project. They still have a full day of school and they've got homework they have to do at night, even though it's all online learning. And I tell you, I'm really thankful for a school that takes it seriously keeps educating them. Okay, we're going to put that on there like that. And I'm going to take some blueberry bushel grow grain, grow grain ribbon and I'm going to tie it in a bow. Mm, there we go. Okay. And let's snip the ends here. Okay, and now I'm going to use a glue dot to stick that on the front of this K-cup holder. Now, if you wanted to, you could double the size of this so that, or make this a little bit larger so that you could um, put two K-cups in there. All right, and here's the K-cup. And it just drops right into the center just like that. So there you go. So we have that. Now if you're a coffee drinker, obviously you can put coffee in there. You could put tea in there. Whatever you want to do. So these are the projects I made tonight. 
and they all use the Rise and Shine set, and this is a free celebration set. So if you order $100, this is a free set. All clear photopolymer so you can build and layer to your heart's content. So I thought these were really cute though. I look on the internet and I see project ideas. So that's where I got these from. And then I made them. So thank you so much for joining me tonight on my Coronacation Live. Um, I appreciate it and I hope you'll come back tomorrow night at 8 o'clock to stamp with me again. In the meantime, if you feel like ordering, I would so appreciate it. You can go to my site, shopwithnicole.stampinup.net, or if you want a catalog, just email me at nicole at thejoyfulstamper.com. So, okay, guys, thanks for joining me tonight. Bye.